Hello, everybody. So, something has happened. Uh, the official 4.6 release came out, and they didn't fix the mouse bug, but they did fix a lot of the other bugs. And you can see down at the bottom of the screen, I now have a bunch of warnings popping up. And these warnings are related to Rect Transform being set. So we're going to go ahead and update our methods so that they are not going to spit warnings out. And in the process, I'm going to talk a little bit about these Rect Transforms being set incorrectly and how we can take advantage of this new feature, because it's actually quite useful. So here, this is in the battle status indicator, and you can see that when we instantiate the battle status thing, what we do is we say, okay, we'll put it in the right parent, and then set its local position and local rotation. Um, and we have to do these because it spawns in at some arbitrary point in the world, and then when we set its parent equal to the indicator target, it doesn't move at all. So it's like off at zero, zero, zero or whatever, and someone's moving around, and it's just flying around somewhere on the horizon. But this new method, uh, allows us to really just do this a lot simpler. We say bu.battlestatus.transform.setParent and then we can choose the parent, which is in this case the indicator target. And then if we hit comma, we can see world position stays. Now if we set this to true, as it is by default, then it'll stay at 000 and fly around as we're used to. But if we set it to false, then it won't. And it will actually uh, be reset to the proper position in our uh, in our as as we set it up, and so if we were to hit play again here, we see a couple of different. We have a couple of small errors still here. We'll deal with them in a second, but uh, you can see that these are not being screwed up. They're still all in the right spot and all that stuff, uh, and that's simply because we uh, we have the same result. So that's really a great way to handle the offset thing we were having a problem with a long time ago because we don't have that problem anymore. They fixed it. Uh, you just use set parent and say, well, don't keep wherever in the world it is. Reset it to where it's supposed to be. Reset it to where I defined it as being, um, because obviously we want it to be in the place where we you know, specified it. Here we have another one. And once again, you can see that we uh, chained these offset mins and offset maxes and all this stuff. And we no longer need to do that, because we set it up correctly when we first defined it. And the only reason we're setting it up again here is because uh, we needed to do this because the world position was wrong. Uh, we also are setting up a. Uh, uh, we're marching these down the screen. This is this. This is the thing we're not using anymore. Um, that's this here. So what I'm actually going to do is just delete it at the moment uh, because we're going to want to actually use a, a vertical layout system, which is a different set of tools here. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to. Um, where is it? There it is. Just going to replace this part here. There we go. Uh, do we have any more errors? No. So there, we fixed it. Now we are seeing one small issue, and that is that this uh, floating icon is actually not floating in the center of the slime, it's floating off to the front of the slime. If we zoom in on a slime here, you can see how the uh, indicator target is actually behind or off to the side. And that's because uh, when we defined this, we defined it as having a specific offset. And now that we're here, the offset is wrong. Um, and we're no longer setting the offset manually, so it's keeping the offset that we initially built this system with. So when we first created this, we created it with a specific offset, and it turns out that we now are keeping that offset. So it's time for us to put this up here and try and figure out what sort of orientation and all that stuff we actually want it to have. So if I hit play, you can see that we now have two attached to that one enemy. See how it's flickering? And they're both in the same spot. So this really is where it is uh, located at. The problem is that uh, it's pointed upwards because we have this auto-seek thing where it's going to point at us. So its rotation does not matter. The only thing that matters is its position. And its position is offset by a considerable amount. So if we set this position offset to zero, it should go to the middle, we hit apply, and that'll save it. And if we wanted to double check, we can see that it's uh, definitely zero there as well. So delete that, I hit play. There, that's better, they're no longer oddly offset. 
But of course, that ability to offset them is very valuable because now we can do all sorts of significantly more aggressive design choices when it comes to these pop-ups. And, uh, and they'll be a lot more uh, flexible. And we'll have the same thing with uh, on-screen HUDs and menus and so on and so forth. Now that we can spawn them in without having to worry about manually placing them, we can spawn them in, we can set the parent, and we can just say, put it where it's supposed to be. Don't keep it wherever you spawned it in. That's nonsense. All right. Well, that said, this is all we needed to do to adapt our project to the new settings. And in uh, the next episode, we will probably continue to polish this battle system a little bit. It's pretty clunky, and I wanted to make it less clunky. Um, I hope that this was understood, this particular uh, tutorial was understood, because we covered some code that we haven't touched in a while, and we just kind of briefly blitzed through it. But I hope uh, it was clear.